Yo, what is up guys? Stalboy here, aka Blue Collar Sports TV. Hopefully you guys are doing well. If you're new here, smash that like, hit subscribe, all of that good stuff. So, this video is a quick preview for the Derek Chisora versus Kubrat Pulev 2 undercard. Now, in regards to the main events, I have done a prediction video for that on my channel, so check that out if you want. But briefly, in regards to the main events, I mean... I guess it's an okay fight, but it was a, when this fight got announced, I was very surprised because obviously this is a rematch and first time around when they fought in 2016, it wasn't a particularly great fight. There was a lot of holding, a lot of mauling, really a, a messy fight quite frankly. And yes, on, on, on paper, the fight was a split decision, but that was bogus. Uh, Kubrat Pulev won that first fight clearly, as far as I'm concerned. So for me, the need for this rematch isn't really there. The first time around, it wasn't a great fight. So it doesn't really fill me, uh, fill me with confidence going into this rematch that it's going to be any better. The only thing I will say is that both guys now are significantly older. So maybe that might make it a better fight. Who knows? I I'm hoping, but I'm not going to be expecting much from the main event in regards to pure entertainment. Hopefully I'm wrong. I'd like to be surprised. But the main event, it is what it is. Uh, I mean, what else can I say? But let's have a look at the undercard. And this is actually my first time seeing the undercard. I've heard a lot of bad things about it on social media, but I've not checked it out myself. So what I'll do is I'll run through the fights on the undercard and I'll give you my thoughts on it. We shall start with, and I'm assuming this is the co-main event, Israel Madrimov, 8-0 prospect at Super Welterweight, well I guess he's a contender now, he is fighting Michel Soro, who's been a contender at Super Welterweight for a long time now, many years, he's been there or thereabouts for a long time. Now, this is actually a rematch, these guys fought in December of last year in Uzbekistan, and Israel Madrimov won the first fight, uh, he won the first fight by a ninth round TKO, as you can see. And the first fight was competitive. Madrimov uh, Madr was winning, but Soro was giving him problems here and there, intermittently kind of thing. And it would have been interesting to see what would have happened if that fight went into the 10th, 11th and 12th rounds. Because Madrimov has gassed in certain fights and he's a, gu he's a guy who utilises a lot of energy. So it would have been interesting to see what would have happened if it, if it, if it got to those rounds. Now... The first fight was very controversial. By the way, I need, I need a quick drink of coffee. One second. My throat is going. <clears throat> so yeah, first time around, the fight was very controversial. It was stopped in the ninth by a T well via TKO. But what happened was, Madrimov hurt Michel Soro, from what I remember. And then, then Madrimov basically unloaded a barrage of punches on Soro. The bell went, and the bell went for several seconds... Madrimov was still punching and the referee waved it off. So basically he waved it off after the bell. It was a very controversial stoppage. Up until that point, the fight was relatively competitive. Madrimov was definitely winning, but he was having his troubles. He was having his problems. So I'm glad this rematch has been made. It's the right thing to do. And very we we very rarely see that in boxing. You can't You can't win a fight like that and you can't lose a fight like that. It needed to be run back, and here we are. So, yeah, I mean, this is a good fight. Um, you know, Madrimov is wanting to... He's on the come up. He, he's wanting to compete for world titles. And in order to do so, he's got to do a job on Michel Soro, who, who himself is a world-level contender. So, the winner of this fight will be in a great position to fight for a world title at Super Welterweight. So, yeah, this fight makes a lot of sense to me. I'm looking forward to it. I always like watching Israel Madrimov fight, and Michel Soro is a very underrated boxer in his own right. He's got a really good jab, he's got really good straight punches, uh, and yeah, he's been there, seen it, done it at, at, at quite a high level. So, this rematch makes a lot of sense. It's a, it's, a, it's a yes from me, thumbs up from me. Felix Cash versus Vaughn Alexander. Now, this is deeply disappointing as far as I'm concerned. Felix Cash is a very entertaining domestic fighter, maybe European level, maybe, but he's very exciting, but he's vulnerable, you know, that, that's what makes him exciting, he can punch, and he can be hurt. Now, 
I'm ex I was expecting a much better opponent than Vaughn Alexander. Vaughn Alexander is a tough guy. He's a really good gatekeeper slash journeyman. Uh, he's very durable. He's only been stopped once, I believe, by Zach Parker. Yeah, he's been stopped once by Zach Parker. And yeah, he's gone the distance against the likes of Melikusiev, Anthony Sims Jr. I mean, you know, he beat Lewis Arias quite recently, so... Vaughn Alexander is a good journeyman, and if you're not at a, if you're not at a certain level, he can expose you. There's no doubt about it. But this is not really the sort of fight in which we want from Felix Cash right now. Felix Cash is coming off a really good fight against Madaev. Um, yeah, Magomed Madaev, and it, that fight was a great fight, by the way. Uh, Felix Cash was dropped twice in that fight, and he won a razor-close unanimous decision. Now, I felt he won that fight, by the way, but it was very close, and some people felt that Madaev won. I don't get why they couldn't have just made the rematch for this. Uh, why not make a rematch in instead of uh, Vaughn Alexander? It would have made a lot more sense to me. This is, this is just lazy matchmaking, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, they're going to bring in a durable guy who can go rounds, but if you're at any certain level, you'll beat him. That's not really a fight to get excited about, as far as I'm concerned. The rematch made a lot of sense. I, I, I'm, I'm assuming that Magomed Madaev is not exactly an expensive opponent, so why not bring him over again? It was a great fight first time around. And, uh, you know, first time around it was only a 10-rounder, as you can see. So why not? What they could have done here is, is do the rematch in a 12-rounder, I think everybody would have been happy, right? But Felix Cash versus Vaughn Alexander, poor, uh, poor as far as I'm concerned. You've got, um, I, I don't know how to say that first name. Somebody told me how to say this first name, but I, I always forget. Um, Agiaco, who's, who is an Irish uh, super welterweight prospect, he is fighting Lukas Masiek. Um, Agiaco's on the come up, he's a prospect. This is a perfectly acceptable learning fight. Again, nothing to really write home about, but in terms of development, uh, this fight is fine for Agiaco. Uh, Masiek actually recently fought Anthony Fowler, I believe. Yeah, he recently fought Anthony Fowler, went the distance, gave he gave Fowler a bit of work, so that's a pretty good test for Agiaco. But again, nothing to write home about, uh, in my opinion. We also have the return of heavyweight prospect, Fabio Wardley. Now, Fabio Wardley's a weird one. <clears throat> He's got an interesting style. He's athletically gifted, but he obviously picked up boxing very late. I believe he turned he turned to boxing. He first started boxing when he was 19 or 20 years old. So he's basically learning on the job. So, you know, this opponent right here, TBA as it is right now, uh, it's not going to be anything. He's not going to be anything special, whoever it is. Just another mark in time fight for Fabio Wardley. And yeah, while I find Fabio Wardley's style somewhat entertaining, his opponents, man, have, have been leaving a lot to be desired. And what I mean by that, I understand that he needs learning fights. I understand that he's lacking experience. What I mean is, his opponents have literally come down to lay down. You know, um, Richard Latte took a blatant dive, as far as I'm concerned. <clears throat> I mean, let's have a look quickly, one second. I'm really disorganized here, as you guys as you guys can tell. So yeah, I mean Daniel Martz, he basically laid down. Eric Molina laid down. Richard Latte laid down. I mean the guy the guys had so many opponents who basically quit or or who knows maybe took a dive. Who knows? Um, so yeah, I mean Fabio Wardley. While I find his style entertaining, I'm not really convinced what he's learning from these fights. So yeah, I mean, hopefully he fights somebody durable who can go a few rounds. I think that's what he needs. But we shall see. We shall see. I mean, I'm not really expecting much on, on four or five days notice, you know. But Fabio Wardley, he is what he is. He's okay. I don't really see him... I don't really see him progressing above European level or, or, or British level, to be honest. Uh, at, at best, if he gets to European level, I think he would have done very well. Uh, we also have Ramla Ali on the card. As you guys know, I'm not a big fan of female boxing. Well, I'm not a fan of female boxing, so we'll leave that one alone. Yusuf Ibrahim, who is a prospect, he's fighting on the undercard. Never seen Ibrahim fight before, so we shall see what he brings to the table. And heavyweight prospect, Solomon Dacres, or, or Dacres, or however you say his surname, 
He is fighting Kevin Nicholas Espindola, who I've never heard of. Let's have a look at Kevin's record. Oh, he seems pretty durable. He seems pretty durable. Okay, he went the distance with Ivan Dichko uh, recently. So that's a pretty good fight for uh, Solomon Dacre's third, uh, for his fourth fight. Fair enough, he seems quite durable. Uh, Solomon is, is just starting his career as a professional heavyweight. So that's acceptable, you know, that's acceptable. But, you know, when you look at this undercard, and ultimately when you look at this card as a whole, it's not particularly strong. I mean... I like I, I like the Soro Madrimov fight. I think it needs to happen. The rematch, that makes sense. The Chizura Pulev fight I'm lightly intrigued about. But but the card as a whole, there's nothing here that really but like sorry, I'm, there's nothing out there that really jumps out at you or, or, or grabs your attention kind of thing. It's all much of a muchness, it's all meh, you know? That's how I, that's how I would describe this card is meh. Meh, you know? If, if I had something else on, I certainly wouldn't stay in for this card. But, as of right now, my Saturday evening is free. So, more than likely I'll watch it. We shall see. Anyway, share your thoughts below, guys. What do you think of this undercard? Am I being harsh on it? But, I don't think it's particularly great, quite frankly. It's average at best. Share your thoughts below. Beanie Guy Delboy.